we're back, and that was good. Um, I want to reconvene the public meeting and call for a report of all the actions uh, taken in closed session. There's a number of readouts. If you'd like to start, Trustee Williams. Push, Push the Push. button. If it's red, it means go. True. It's antithetical to everything you know and love. <laughs> All right. In closed session, the board unanimously took action to approve settlement of workers' comp claim 576889 with employee 8371. In closed session, the board unanimously took action to accept the resignation agreement of employee 27000 from the position of vice chancellor, workforce development, advancement, and media systems. I have the next one. In closed session, the board unanimously approved or took action to approve settlement of workman's comp claim 573023 with employee 23420. Right. Uh, Trustee Houston? Three. So in closed session, the board unanimously took action to approve the release of probationary employee number 26625 from the position of grounds caretaker effective February 14, 2020. And then next, in closed session, the board unanim unanimously took action to ratify settlement of workers' comp claim 547734 with employee number 28582. And then finally, in closed session, the board unanimously took action to approve settlement of workers' comp claim number 567044 with employee number 28489. Are there any other items to read out? Okay. Um, next item is public comments on agenda items. There were none, but I'd like to ask the indulgence of my colleagues to um, combine number seven and number 14, which is um, uh, comments on non-agenda items for efficiency and for the people that came here to speak on those things. Um, is that okay with you guys? Okay. Do we need a vote on it? Do we need a motion? Without objection, then. Thank you very much. So we have three, uh, and the first is Sarah Mooney. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, Sarah Mooney with the Campaign for College Opportunity. Nice to see everyone here. I'll keep it brief because uh, before the meeting started, I handed out two pieces of paper to you all. Uh, the first is, or the second rather, is a copy of my comments from the last board meeting. Is this better? Sorry, thank you. Um, my comments from the last board meeting, just kind of detailing some of the characteristics that we would like to see in the new chancellor. And the second uh, piece of paper is a collective letter from a number of our partner organizations from the region asking for a seat on the search committee so we can be a part of this process. I know this is a super important job um, and one of the main characteristics that we would like to see in a chancellor is this um, real intentional commitment to engage with community partners. So we believe that a seat on the search committee would set a really good precedent for that ongoing engagement. But again, we're always here to support you guys, appreciative of the work that you all do, and excited for this next phase of leadership for the district. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Mooney. Um, next is, I'm going to say it wrong, Kinesi. Kanisha? Kanisha, I'm sorry, Kanisha. Uh, Bufong? I see your name on my Facebook, but I've never pronounced <laughs> Kanisha. it. Sorry, Kanisha. Kanisha Bufong. Hi, how, how is everyone doing? Uh, my name is Kanisha Bufong. I am the president of the uh, Community College District Black Faculty and Staff Association. Um, and I just wanted to speak with all of you today because First of all, we are celebrating Black History Month, and we want to invite each and every one of you out. You may have a flyer in front of you um, to our breakfast. Our celebration is going to be next Friday um, at 9 a.m. on Valley College's campus. And our theme is knowing the past and shaping the future. But uh, keeping in line with knowing the past and shaping the future, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up that our district has a history of being complacent with are low retention and success rates for African-American students. Um, we have a lot of lip service towards this, but we don't see any real effort. This is not a Valley College issue. This is not a Crafton Hills issue. This should be a district issue. Um, 
now that you're in the search for a new chancellor, we would like to also have a seat on that search committee. We would like to see a chancellor that is culturally competent. We would like to see a chancellor that is uh, familiar and from this community, which in 100 years, we have not had a black chancellor yet. And so we would like to be a part of this process so that we can ensure that we have someone that is concerned about all the students. I think that this community deserves more. Our students deserve better. And so I just want to make that appeal to you. We would definitely like a seat at that table. And I'm the next speaker, I would assume. Oh. Yes, you are, Mr. Gomez. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Ed Gomez, Latino Faculty Staff Administration Association, and I'm the president currently. First of all, I'd like to thank two of your board members for the precedence that they set of making that a, an organization on our campus. Gloria, thank you very much. Frank, you, thank you very much for your time of starting those, that organization with the purposes of diversity on our campuses and our community. We had a meeting together with both black faculty of the district and Latino faculty of the district recently, and it is of our utmost concern that the search have members from the community on that. Currently, uh, Crafton Hills, from the numbers that I'm seeing in research, is approximately 54.5% people of color. We know that the city of San Bernardino is 67.5%. We know that the district at our level over at Valley College is 72% and continues to go on and on and on including the county, which is 78% people of color. And when we look at the record of what we've had at the helm of this district for almost 100 years, it is not reflective of that, and that's of deep concern to us. So we are asking that we have a point somewhere on there where we can have a member of our associations on there to be, if you will, part of that discussion to make sure that the best persons are brought forth and that that's a consideration. And we're really hopeful that that will take place uh, because it is that we talk all the time about diversity, we talk all the time about equity, and like I said, two of your members were the beginning of our organization, which was originally set up to push for the diversity and equity in our community, on our campuses, and at all points in, in between, and we're really hopeful that that will happen. So thank you very much. Appreciate you uh, moving the agenda for us, and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, point, just point of information. Yes. Um, at can we have a future conversation about what our process and the search process is going to look like and how stakeholder groups will be engaged? Well, all of that has not been completed yet. We've just started. We had a first, um, first meeting today with uh, the ACCP representative, Dr. Drew Stoker, um, to talk about a timeline. But it is when, when, very when, when exclusive. you're ready, not, to, not today, but just okay. a future conversation so that we can talk about you know, how stakeholders can engage, what the process is going oh, to be Oh, absolutely, like. absolutely. They've already started building documents on that. Good, yes. Any other comments? Okay. Um, presentations, apparently there are none. Reports, uh, board committee reports. Would you like to? We had a uh, finance committee uh, session this afternoon, which was um, a session that was uh, a training session basically for the committee on how we determine and how uh, we get funded depending on full-time equivalent students. So we had a, a very good discussion, a lot of uh, conversation about uh, the different types of FTS. It is a complicated process. And I want to thank uh, Steve Satoris for uh, making an attempt to educate us. And um, I, I really welcome anybody who wants to come uh, to attend the Finance Committee. Uh, we, have, uh, we do not have any recommendations coming to the board today uh, from the committee, but we did have a very good discussion so that everybody understands exactly how we're funded as a district and what uh, full-time equivalent students really mean and how uh, that affects our scheduling and the offerings that we make on each campus. So uh, again, I would like to thank them for that. I, didn't, I don't remember what else we talked about. Oh, we did talk about, um, uh, we saw a timeline 
uh, of uh, the FCC proceeds and where we are on that. And the first uh, report as of December 30th or 31st of the um, principal and also the gained interest. So, um, and what, what recommendations will be coming down the line on the use of those funds. So, uh, a good discussion. And again, we usually meet on the day of a board meeting. And we meet at 2 o'clock. And uh, certainly it is a published meeting. And so anyone is uh, in welcome to attend. Trustee um, Williams. I just wanted to give kudos to um, Jose, um, Stacy, and the executive committee. We had our board retreat um, last week or a couple of days ago. It was one of the, I think, the best that we've had. Um, it was highly focused, time well spent, and um, I left out of there encouraged with the direction and the opportunities that we have, and so um, great job on putting that together. Thank you. Mr. Reyes? Yes, I on the fact that we, um, we visited uh, uh, Sacramento, we had uh, a delegation, and as all of you may know, if we're going to make any changes, it we start at the state. I mean, that, those are the people that really can make policy that has a great impact uh, on uh, whether it be funding, whether it be student success and so forth. And uh, we had a very, very good representation. Uh, we spoke to uh, about five of them. Uh, and I, I believe you also had, because I had a chance to meet with other individuals, but um, a group of us met with the uh, leadership of the, of, the, mm -hmm. of the governor. So they know um, that we're concerned with funding and so forth. So I was uh, very, very pleased to, uh, to be there. Uh, we'll continue to be there. Uh, they can't, uh, we can't say enough and be there enough so that they know that uh, we're going to be addressing issues that are really important to, uh, uh, to our community. I especially want to thank uh, Angel. Uh, Angel was the one that helped set up the, the meetings. We were very well uh, uh, accepted and they listened to our issues and our concerns. So I think we're in the right direction. And I want to thank our, our leaders, uh, the two presidents that were there and, mm -hmm. and the board members that went and, and met with these individuals. Thank you so much. Are there other reports? I just wanted to say that today I had the honor of uh, being at the uh, inaugural graduation class, eight graduates from the Home Builder Training Program um, through the formerly incarcerated adult program through the BIA. I'm going to say all of that wrong, but you know where I'm going with that. And it was absolutely amazing. These guys have made a difference in their own lives. We've offered an opportunity for them to do something really important and special. And they could have just gotten PhDs the way their parents were reacting to what they, it just makes you feel very good about what you do when programs like that are offered and people can participate in them and really, you know, really do something that's gonna be life changing, family changing. So I was very honored and proud to be part of the um, organization today. Um, okay, so on board information request report, what do we report out on that? We just go through. If there are any, que if there are any questions from yeah. the board, but we just. Yeah, I, got, I have the only one that's on there, like, the, um, and I've been asked about this, about the, uh, is there like a fund or students that are contributing um, time to um, district, the stipends, how, how, mm -hmm. how is that being implemented? Are students taking advantage of it? Do they know about it? Um, do we, um, did you still have questions about the student stipend for student leaders? This is the only one that's still on there, and yeah. then it's, it says it's scheduled to be completed. Is this December of this year? That is scheduled to be completed December of this year, yes. Meaning that that's when we're going to promote, or that's N when? No, we have to develop a policy. I'm looking at Christina because uh, she's in charge of this one. Oh, okay. We're going so to develop a policy, correct, in okay. which we determine the rates, we determine how they're going to get paid, the, the methods and how they're going to get paid. So Christina is working on the details of it. Once it's ready, we send it to the process, uh, get the uh, district assembly, and bring it to the board for approval as well. One of the ideas that we talked about, and I don't know if it's still fee if it's even feasible, but can 
they can you use federal work study um, for compensating a student since the, you know if it's a leadership position can you use federal work study dollars to we'll, we'll in look some kind into of way that. yeah we'll look into that I'm not sure if we're allowed to use work study program but we'll look into that as well but I'm just a point about it I was under the impression that it was already in effect district wide if a student was in the service of the district because Maritza and I are already paid eight mm -hmm. hours if we do things district wide. So would that not also apply to district committees and things along those lines for other students? It, it should be, uh, it should apply to also those that participate in any committees that we ask them to participate, yes. Including hiring. Including hiring, okay. that is correct, yes. And that's what we're implementing. Yes. Okay, moving on to good news. I believe our interim chancellor has a few things. I, I do. Uh, following up when Trustee Reyes mentioned the delegation that we sent out to Sacramento, mm -hmm. uh, I just want to say uh, that how proud I was to spend the time with the our student trustees. They were absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you, have, you have to see them in action. They are unbelievably great. Uh, the, man, the, the great work that they did, it would feel like, okay, we don't have to say anything. They're saying anything for us. It really is. That's true. It really is. It's amazing that the, the level of uh, activity that they have. In addition to that, I also wanted to play a little video that they have done um, regarding the census. So I think it's ready for you. Yes. My name is Tyrone Ross. My name is Christian Barragon. Hi, my name is Jessica. I'm Elijah Gerard. I'm the student trustee. Chief Executive of Academic Affairs. I'm the student trustee. I'm the Crofton Hill student president. And I'm a student senator here at San Bernardino Valley College. I actually didn't do much homework on it. I think this guy knows the most. I disagree. And I know almost nothing about the census. Maybe none of us know anything. We don't know. Maybe I might be the best one here. <laughs> <laughs> See, when the entire population of the United States gets counted. All right, that's correct. Cheater. That is correct. Woohoo! Good I would, job. I just want the record to reflect, like, do I think I'll do well? No. But do I want to win? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm ready for you too. No, I was there first. This is so bad. I'll just see everything you can. All right, that's the correct answer. It's two points for Christian. I'm tired of this. <laughs> C, every 10 years. That is correct. Thank you. Let's give him a clap right there. <laughs> or option C, because it helps determine federal funding for public services in our community, like schools, <laughs> hospitals, and fire departments. <laughs> option C. Because it helps with our federal funding. Although I would like to get a hug from Baby Yoda, which would be awesome, we definitely need our students to say their voice so we can get federal funding. You weren't gonna get three for three. That's All right, two to one. Since they're both the same, all of the above. <laughs> yeah. All of the above. That is true. All of the above. True. False. I feel like this should be true. I'm going to go with true. Right. That the answer is true. Yeah. yeah. It's increasingly important for communities of color and recent immigrant communities who normally aren't able to do the face-to-face -face option. <laughs> Just <laughs> what are you doing? I was like trying to process the question because I was like, it will be confidential. <laughs> yes. No one should have any type of fear of um, take, applying for the census because the information will be protected. Right. Christian wins. Christian wins. Oh, you you Tyrone. Tyrone. Oh, okay. Tyrone wins. You would get nothing. <laughs> there is a prize. There is a prize. Whoever's doing the marketing is like doing a really good job. No, please. What question is this? I like this one. Those answers good. <laughs> Yeah, 
I learned that the census will be done on April 1st, 2020. It's important because that's how we get our federal funding. It helps fund nonprofit organizations like uh, schools, parks, um, fire department. Everyone can benefit from those things. The fact that you can actually register for the census on your cell phone, mm -hmm. and that actually makes it easy access for everyone. It would, like, doesn't take that long, so it's, it's important that we're keeping up with like technology and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So listen, guys, go help out with the census on April 1st, 2020. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Good boy. Very nice. You and I, go, please. I was going to add something that I forgot. It's really not a committee report, but I wanted to thank um, Inez Canela for coming to speak to our Kiwanis Club. Uh, it was extremely well received and it was uh, focused on our outreach efforts to make sure that um, small businesses, uh, businesses that I own by uh, women and by uh, uh, minority groups or are included in our process for con the con in our bond process, that they are looked at and helped in order to participate in some of the uh, contracts that we have coming up. And so it is part of the uh, agreement we made some time ago. Um, I'm hoping uh, it was very well received, a lot of good information, good questions. And uh, hopefully she got some leads on some people that we haven't been able to contact before. And so we're looking at uh, small uh, companies that have sometimes no more than two to five employees. Uh, but they're painters, they're locksmiths, there are a variety of jobs that will be available uh, to uh, our community. And of course, pushing all the time, local hire, local hire, local hire. Thank you, Inez. Thank you. Um, next item is key performance indicators. We all have the report. Were there any questions? Nothing anyone wanted to address? All right. Wait, oh, just, yeah. Why did yeah. we wait? Go on. Okay, was, uh, no question. Just um, it, I really appreciate having this at the front of the agenda. Mm -hmm. And um, it, especially on the heels of the Finance Committee and the discussion, uh, it, ju it just connects everything very nicely. So mm -hmm. that, that's my only comment. Thank you. Well, we also wanted to move it up because we wanted an opportunity, to, if there was going to be discussion, if there needed to be discussion, for transparency. So questions, comments? Mine is just uh, on page 12 and then um, page 11. Just if we could have the graphs mm -hmm. not skewed, it feels almost like disingenuine. We started at 50% on page 11. Yes. And then when we increase by 1%, <laughs> it looks massive. Yes. And so when we decrease, it also looks massive. Oh my, yes. And so, yeah. As a <laughs> stats professor, I will support that. <laughs> <laughs> very, very much. The, so, yeah. The, the only thing that I'd like to see in, in added is addition, the, the student success indicators, that scorecard, and um, you know, have that as a part of this. Okay, please. So we have uh, four sets of uh, key performance indicators, and every single month we bring you different sets of key performance indicators. Last month we brought you some other ones. This month was goal, the, the related to goal number four, which were direct district operational systems. We have to do with uh, the, the bond, the 50% law, um, and the reserves as well. But next month, we'll bring something else. We'll bring another goal. Goal number one has to do with student success, which I believe Trustee William, that's what you're asking for. Yeah, I, goal I remember, number two is normal remember them access. switching. I just didn't understand how we like keep track if they switch every month. Is it because there's no change? Or like I just Correct. lose track of what I'm looking at because it's always something different. Correct. Student yeah. success, is, it's not, m monthly, it's not going to change okay. uh, because there are metrics that happen every semester, after every semester. Uh, we can permit every single month, but they will be the same. It, it's up to the trustees' desire, whatever you decide. I just think you just don't lose track of what the measures are. 
um, cause we digest so much information. I just we can know, incorporate so all of them you know, if you like. It, it, whatever the dis the tr these desire the board desires, we can incorporate all of them well, at once. If the data is already there and it and it doesn't change, maybe just including it again, saying no change since sure. last month. Or we can do that. When uh, I know some things are looked at quarterly, correct, and such. So you know, next anticipated update date, and then we would know. Sure, yeah. definitely. And it wouldn't be a lot of extra. Sure. Okay, good. Other discussion on that item? No. Okay. We're passing notes to Jose. All right, there you go. Um, next item is a report from the San Bernardino Valley College Academic Senate, please. Oh, but before we do that. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Celia. Sorry, Celia. Uh, <laughs> one more thing I wanted to do. I wanted to introduce our new Vice President of Student Services, Dr. Delmi Montenegro Spencer. Oh, yeah. She's been with us for a month now. One month, yes. So welcome, welcome to the district. Crafton, Crafton, Vice President of Student Services. Very nice, well welcome. And now with a woman who needs no introduction. <laughs> from the San Bernardino Valley College Academic Senate. Oh, good afternoon. Um, thank you. Uh, I wanted to just say really quick, I loved the video. I was actually there uh, with Angel Rodriguez during the filming of the one at Valley in the library. And it was really fun to see it all come together. You guys did such a great job and to see it blended with Crafton. So um, that was a pleasant surprise this evening. Um, I want to take a moment to thank you again. Uh, I did not make the last meeting, and I know that um, Amy Avalar spoke on my behalf, and thank you for sabbaticals. But I want to personally thank you for sabbaticals because I actually uh, was awarded one of those. So <laughs> thank you again for doing the sabbaticals. And then uh, the work of the Senate, what we've been working on lately, we uh, have uh, reviewed and the AP 3505 on the emergency preparedness and returned that to district assembly to go through the process. Uh, we have been working on accreditation, reviewing each of the standards every week and having people send us feedback. Uh, this past week, we took a first look at our quality focus essay. Uh, we've been working with Crafton Hills College on advancement in rank, and we approved the changes that both um, senates had worked to agree to. Um, let's see. We uh, endorsed reassign in a job description for a study abroad faculty lead, and that it goes forward through the channels. Um, we mapped our institutional learning outcomes to our campus climate survey. So our institutional learning outcomes are one of those outcome things we have to measure. And so our campus climate surveys for student and faculty, there's a few sections that just really align well with our institutional learning outcomes. So we mapped them so that we could gather some quantitative data from students and faculty about how students feel they are meeting institutional learning outcomes and then how faculty feel. Because one of our institutional learning outcomes has to do with quantitative reasoning. So by mapping that to the questions in the campus climate survey, we get both the student's perspective of how much learning is going on for quantitative reasoning and the faculty perspective. So uh, we're looking forward to that. It's kind of a new way to look at it. Of course, we're continuing to map our institutional learning outcomes to our student learning outcomes so we can get quantitative, quantitative, qualitative, quantitative data uh, through the mapping to the um, student learning outcomes. The ACCJC annual report is going to be coming around soon. Uh, we are expecting it to hit the campus on the 20th of this month, and that will have us looking at our institution set standards, uh, which of course is a requirement for accreditation, and so that'll be assessed during the report, and I'm sure reported out to you as well. And while we're playing with the accreditation line here, we had our third, fourth forum today. We had a forum on standard four, which is leadership and governance. So if your ears were burning, say between 2.30, uh, 12.30 and two, that was when we were addressing standard four, which as you know, standard uh, four C and four D addresses the board and uh, the chancellor CEO position. So we had a robust discussion on that. We had really good student attendance today. 
So it, uh, it was quite fun. I know that in your board book is a timeline for accreditation approval. Just want to let you know that our campus is on track to have the document to you at the time stated in your board book. Um, in the future for um, Academic Senate at our next meeting, we are going to be um, discussing cap claps. Ooh, that was bad. Class caps. Um, the CTA has asked some input for Senate. We are going to be looking at a number of APs and BPs that are going through the collegial consultation process that have to do with copyright, intellectual property, and things that faculty need to like know for the classroom in those uh, two areas. And we're going to be taking a first look at the guided pathways scale of adoption assessment next week as well. So that is what we've had planned and are planning. Oh, and our next accreditation form is going to be on February 27th, and that is going to be standard three, which are all the district areas. So we will be having a forum to discuss our findings and evidence for human resources, facilities, technology, and budget. And I know we're sending out announcements for that. So if you are available, please come and provide your input. Um, bring evidence. We are always welcoming more voices, more evidence, and more direction. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next up is San Bernardino Valley College Classified Senate. No report. Um, San Bernardino Valley College Associated Students. All right. Um, Crafton Hills College Academic Senate. Good evening. I actually took notes on the phone. I'm not on Facebook, I promise. Uh, we start, I have a few things to report. We started a conversation at our last Senate meeting about institutional racism on our campus. Christina Annan came and spoke with our Senate. Uh, it's become a big conversation in the statewide Senate. And I, I'm just really looking forward to it becoming a conversation that has some real teeth to it that we keep going on our campus. Um, so the Senate's been working with the president to try to figure out ways that we can actually do something more than just say something. And we've had some good conversations start. Uh, a team of us are attending the faculty and staff diversification event in March, and I'll be attending that. Um, we had a, a, an amazing kickoff event for Black History Month, and we've got events going on throughout the month that are on our website. I strongly encourage you to attend as many as you can. Come check out some things. We have some great things going on. Our campus will be hosting a, an ASCCC, a, a statewide academic senate event called Collegiality in Action. Uh, we're looking sometime probably in the beginning of the fall semester. Uh, there is so much new leadership just uh, around the entire campus. Uh, and, and so what the goal of this is to educate the, the leadership on the 10 plus 1 and the campus on the 10 plus 1 from the Senate. I do want to point something out from the board book. If you look at the performance indicators on page 12 and 13, I am glad that we're meeting those numbers, but we are barely meeting them. Uh, at the 50% law, 50.36%, I, I get the reality it's expensive to run a district. I, I, I know that's so far out of my realm that I, I just, I get that that's a, a difficult thing to do, but it would be so nice to see that number more than just 0.36 above the minimum. And our FON, our faculty obligation number, is a handful. I mean, it's a department worth of people, of people that get us over that number. Mm -hmm. And as I've said at so many meetings, I, I've, as a one-person department, I've got three students transferring to Cal State this year. They all got their acceptance letters this month. If there were two of me, it would probably be 12 people. And any departments like that. The more faculty we could have, the more we could do on our campuses to serve our students. And then last but not least, I want to thank the uh, um, Whoever's been making the decision to give the Senate the opportunity to have representation on the chancellor search, uh, I will be serving on that committee and I'm trying to find someone else too. It is a large commitment, so it's not an easy thing to find, uh, but we will be sending people forward and I really appreciate the opportunity to have us represented there. Thank you. Thank you. Grafton Hill College um, Classified Senate. Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Brandis Mello, finally a face to the name. I am a classified Senate president currently over at Crafton Hills College. Uh, we do have a few things that we do want to kind of 
um, relay to you guys is that we are incorporating Zoom into our classified Senate meetings. So that way if classified members aren't able to leave the office or if they're at home, they can still participate. Uh, we actually got that from District Assembly, so thank you so much. Um, we also are trying to combine efforts with Valley to bridge that gap between Valley and Crafton. So we are gonna be setting up with one representative from Crafton visiting the classified Senate over at Valley and vice versa. So the first time that will be happening is the end of February. So I'm working with Judy right now, the classified Senate president over at Valley. Uh, lastly, we are trying to encourage more involvement for the committees. Um, it is very difficult for classified to be able to leave their office, um, to leave their 40 hour work, um, to actually be involved. We do have managers that are encouraging. Um, we're just hoping to get more support on that end in the sense of, hey, you can actually close down. Let's go ahead and have you be represented on a specific committee. Um, it does get sort of intimidating for classified members to be on a committee, especially if they've never been on one before. Um, a lot of times they feel as though their voice isn't heard. So we are trying to meet with classified members one-on-one -on -one just to kind of encourage and see what their fears are in that matter. Um, on a half-year note, we are currently planning our Classified Professional Week. That's going to be happening the end of May. Um, it is after graduation, but before the summer semester. And we are going to be doing elections for the 2020-2022 year. I know I just got here. You're going to miss me. But they're going to be the e-board as well as the senators um, for the next two years. Thank you. Thank you. Grafton Hills College Associated Students. Uh, I'll deliver for the Associated Students. Thank you. Um, Sean Brown, there was a jujitsu emergency. I don't know. He had to go to the gym. Um, and so I'll be delivering it. Um, but I did, I did want to mention Christina Hannon um, because when I, I meant to mention it in our officer reports earlier, but when I was in Sacramento, I attend, I'm a member of the African American Caucus of Trustees, and Christina Hannon won a statewide equity award, and it was an amazing moment. I feel like oftentimes we don't hear about San Bernardino, and so it was really, really cool. Just wanted to give you a shout out. Um, but anyway, back to students. Um, so our student senate passed a resolution in support of the census. We're going to be setting up events encouraging student participation. Um, Sean Brown, the man who was meant to be here, um, he's working on a resolution which would allow voting booths to be brought onto campus with the San Bernardino Re Voter Registrar's Office. Um, the main issue that we're facing, unfortunately, is the reimbursement of this district. So right now, Erica Paddock, who is our advisor, has put out her own money in order to, f to pay for some of the student senate's events, and she has not received her reimbursement in well over a month. Tyrone Ross, who is our student senate president, was on our incredible new vice president search committee. Um, it's been multiple months since he was supposed to be paid, since this district passed a resolution that would ensure our students were paid for those types of committees. If our classified senate or our academic senate were not receiving their overtime for those committees, it wouldn't be acceptable, but we believe it's acceptable for students. Um, up and coming with our chancellor committee that's going to have students on it, I can guarantee you we will have a student on it. It, I don't know. Um, but. If we want to have a diverse student, if we want to have a student of color, a former foster youth, a differently abled student, all of the people we most need to hear from, those are the students who are least likely to have the free time to call off from work and be able to sit on that committee. So I would like us seeing that we make sure we have the funds ready to go before we're having those types of decisions being made. Mm -hmm. That concludes my report. Quite frankly, I thought that it, that that had already been taken care of because I remember that uh, uh, we went to uh, several activities, and I was very concerned that the students didn't have enough money to be able to pay for that. So, Mr. Chancellor, please uh, let's work on that because we want to make sure that the students are given that opportunity because they're giving up their time and so forth, and uh, uh, it makes it makes us feel uncomfortable when they go with us and, and they don't have the money. Sometimes they have so much pride they don't tell us, and so we need to kind of, you know, help them out if we want to give them active. Because I think we, I'm very proud of the students uh, when they went to Sacramento and when they went to Washington D.C. with me. They're 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 very vocal, and the elected officials really appreciate their input. And whatever you create, we got to make sure that we educate folks on how to use the process if they need to ask for an advance or whatever it is. I think sometimes folks don't know all of the tools that are available to them. And so, um, you know, some type of onboarding process for whoever is signing up for these leadership positions or whatever you're calling it, I think would be helpful. 
Definitely. Thank you. Um, next to CSEA. Good evening. I'm Cassandra Thomas. I'm the first vice president of uh, CSEA. I'm here to report on behalf of Kevin Powell. He's out sick today. Um, so I have a negotiations update. Um, we are doing a classification study, and it's been ongoing for a while. Um, but lately, we have been moving job descriptions back and forth. We have 32 out there right now. I think I'm not quite sure how many we have total. It's like something like 80 or 100. Um, but we're making progress. Um, right now, they're in our hands, and we're gonna, we just got them yesterday, and we're going to be countering back. Uh, one of the issues in negotiations right now, I'm, I get to see this. I, I, I get to do new hire orientation. I, I absolutely love doing it. I get to see all of our new hires, bring them in, and I show them the contract. And there's one specific group that I have to hang my head down and say I'm sorry, but you don't get vacations and holidays. And it's incredibly unfortunate. This is an MOU was, that was signed many years ago, and we're working to undo that. Um, so um, I wanted you to know that the, we're working on that, and hopefully you can support us on that and, and uh, ask HR to, to sign off on that. That would be great. Um, I've been talking about, I've been thinking about institutional change quite a bit. Um, about three or four years ago, our relationship, CSEA's relationship with management and HR was, was pretty bad. Um, we didn't have any trust. And I talked to Joe Operas and I said, Joe, how long does it take to change an institution? And he said, about three to five years, as long as you're working for it. Um, right around that time, we hired Christina Hannon. And over the last three years, I can tell you that we were making great progress in that area. Um, we now have a working relationship, a, a trust with HR that didn't exist before. Um, I want to I wanna move that forward. I think the next step is the elephant in the room, is there's mistrust between not all, um, but some management and CSEA. There's, there's CSEA that will not trust management no matter what you say and no matter what you do. And then there's managers who think that we're the enemy. And I don't... I don't like feeling that way. That's a terrible feeling to have. We're here to negotiate. We're here to build relationships. We're here to make sure that we get everything uh, for our members and that people have a good experience working here. And so I think the next step has been spearheaded by Christina Hannon as well. Um, we started doing um, leading at the speed of trust, which is I uh, was fortunate enough to be one of the first people to attend that training, and I found it uh, very enlightening. Um, I figured out things that I'm not doing, right? And I'm working on those. And I, I also figured out why people trust me um, and, and how I can improve that. I have, one of the things that were talked about in that training is how important trust is. You, you absolutely must trust the people in charge in order for things to move forward. And so that's my goal. I would like to see something. Um, I know that Christina is working to bring it to everybody in the district. At some point, everyone's going to sit through this training, and then we're all going to do trust exercises together, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, but I think what we, the next step after that, is I'd like to see CSEA and management sit down and just have conversations about the issues at hand and, and where the barriers are in trust. Um, that would be what I, I haven't talked to Christina about it yet, but I just figured I'd just put it out here. Um, besides that, um, I want to tell you about the safety stuff. Just short, um, the um, AP 3505 is passed first read at District Assembly. It'll be second read at the next meeting. And then I guess after the next board meeting after that, you guys will see it. And then I'll come up here and be all happy and tell you all about it. Um, let's see. And um, one other thing that we're doing is, I don't know if you guys remember, but we had classified professional development funds that were given by the state. I think it was like $80,000. We formed a committee, um, all classified, and then Christina. And, 
And what we're starting, what we're looking at is doing a off-campus classified retreat, kind of like a conference, where what you do that day is you show up to that retreat. That's your job for that day. Um, and what I would like to see um, from the board is for you to, and the chancellor, to push the idea with management, who maybe they just want to get things done. Maybe they, they need to get that thing done, and they want their employee to be there. Maybe the employee doesn't want to go. Encourage them to go. Maybe some people don't actually want to attend these. But we're trying to make it like a conference, um, a one-day conference. And we're going to do, we're not quite sure what trainings we're going to do. We're, we're um, still in the developmental stage. But I want to let you know we're doing that and to, to support us along the way. Um, that's all I had. Thank you. Thank you. CTA? Good evening. Um, my name is Meredith McLaren. I am the SBCCDTA president. So, um, and I know it's been, I think, a month or two since I've been here. So um, we continue to have a pretty good relationship, I think, with the administration, with the district. Um, and so I thought what I would do is just give you a little update about what we've been up to the last uh, couple months. Um, the first thing is we uh, attended uh, Sherry Lillard, um, who is our lead negotiator on our side, um, and I attended the Hunter Conference um, in, I think, December on bargaining. We actually went with a member of the district um, HR um, to have a, a, just to, for workshops to discuss effective strategies for bargaining, um, as well as other areas where the district and the union can work together um, to have you know, successful outcomes. Um, and so that was really good. We even made the front page of the, the little CCA paper. So I'll have to, I'll have to show you that. Um, but anyway, uh, we also had uh, an executive board retreat at the beginning of the month, um, which was very successful. We basically sat down to review last semester, um, look at what we had accomplished. Um, we focused on our goals for spring, as well as what we want to do in the upcoming year. Um, we, you know, focused on uh, reaching our membership, getting information out, communication. Um, our podcasts are continuing. We just put a new one up the other day where we actually said administrators might be human people who, you know, want to work with us. So um, <laughs> we put the podcast up. We have our website up. We actually won an award um, for our communication systems from the state CTA. So um, we do have elections coming up. We have a few positions that are going to be, um, the, the term is ex, uh, ex ended, and so we're going to be doing elections. We are reaching out to faculty um, just to give them information about what these positions are and what the union is, what they do, um, and providing um, that information so that we can start training up basically the next group of people to come in and continue the work that we have, we have been working on and doing these last couple of years. Um, Part of that, we are going to be partnering with the uh, Community College Association, CCA, um, in California to do a regional training um, at Valley College in April, where we will basically have workshops available about what all of these different board positions are. What does the union do? What do all of these positions do? So that if anybody is interested in at least getting information, hearing about what we're doing, um, if sometimes people are curious, but they don't really want to sign up and volunteer for the positions right away. Um, and so this is an opportunity. We're going to do this as a regional um, training with um, any of the community colleges in the IE. So that should be really good. It's the first one. We haven't done it before, so we thought it would be a, a good thing to start. Um, I should have put my notes on my phone because you see mine have like arrows and things, so I got to turn the paper sideways. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we also attended last weekend, we attended a CCA CTA conference um, in San Diego, um, which is always a, a really good conference for uh, union and faculty members. We um, have members um, on the e board participating in a leadership academy um, as well as in grievance training. Um, and so we are continually trying to um, increase our skills as both leaders and just working with our membership. Um, we've also started up our lunch with the board members again. So we've sent out invitations. Um, so be watching for those. I'm just going to send out basically the list of dates um, and let you know these are the dates. And if you have any of these times available, please um, you know, let us know. And we would be happy to have lunch with you before our exec board meetings um, and just get to give you information about us, get to know you as well. So, and we're really looking forward to that, meeting all of you hopefully in the next couple of months, those lunches. So, that's it. Um. Thank you. 
Next item on the agenda is approval of minutes for January 10th, 2020. Um, I move approval. Thank you, Trustee Second. Williams. Thank you, Trustee Longville. Um, student trustees, what is your vote? And I'll need to abstain. Um, other trustees? Aye. Aye. That sounded unanimous to me. <clears throat> Am I correct in that assumption? Okay. <laughs> All right, good. So the minutes are of January 10th, 2020 are approved. Moving on to the consent agenda, all the routine and non-controversial items, except I understand there's a few of them we want to have pulled and discussed, and this is the time to do that. Um, Trustee Williams, you had a few items. 11.2, 11.21, and 11.22. Is there anyone else who has items that they'd like pulled? Um. So we're going to pull 11.2, 11.21, and 11.22. Do you all want to vote on them except those three or discuss those three and then vote on them? What is the parliamentary way to do that? Vote on them without those three? I move approval. Second. And a second. Um, so... All in favor of approving the items with the exception of 11.2, 11.21, and 11.22. We just need students first. Two, two. Yes, yep. student trustees, please. Aye. Um, other trustees? Aye. Aye. Okay. So the consent agenda with the exception of those three items are approved. Um, item 11.2, Trustee Williams. On page 34, um, I just wanted to point out and highlight the, um, the zero net energy certificate. And um, I thought that this was a really cool item to see in the board book. Um, we're going to be building a career technical education center that um, I think it's going to be a net zero building from my understanding of it. And um, we, well, at least we hope so. And, and, you know, if we were going to have that technology in the building, it seems like a great opportunity to train students on these new advanced technologies. And um, it's a, a job outlook that has a bright outlook, and it's a major state goal to reduce greenhouse gas emissions that are coming from buildings. And so um, just kudos to the faculty and the campus for um, adding this as a part of the curriculum. Um, so I would like to move approval of the item. Second. Student trustees, what's your vote? Aye. Trustees? Aye. Aye. Any abstain or, all right, that item is then passed 11.2. 11.21, please. Um, page 95. Man, I told you I was going to bring this up every time I had the opportunity. I just am pushing to, you know, get my shovel and have the chamber come out and um, do the groundbreaking and just, you know, um, you know, I see that we're uh, hiring HM. See architects to provide architectural and engineering services for the technical building and just you know want to continue to get updates on um, if we got new renderings coming out um, schedules like when are we breaking ground um, have we sold the bonds where's the state money like when is the other building coming down and um, I'm gonna keep pushing and asking as many opportunities that we get um, Want to answer yeah. that and then, or, or I probably I'll always help forget. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna ask President Rodriguez to help me out here as well. She's just more involved in the day to day process of, of the CT building as well, and maybe fair as well as jump in as you see fit. Um, HMC is the architect of record for the CT building, we hired them a while back ago. This is an extension of the contract. Uh, initially, when we began the process, the state chancellor's office had a very constrained timeline, we were able to obtain an, an extension on that uh, because it was not feasible. This is the extension that goes along with the extension from the state chancellor's office. That's what this is. Um, the, the process of the technical building, is sorry, it's ongoing, and I'll ask President Rodriguez to give an update as to where we are from the campus perspective. Um, so we've been, we have a, um, a groups of um, faculty meeting with um, with district workers and also our architects to talk about space 
and how we will be using the facility. Uh, Thera has been guiding the conversations uh, from the district perspective to keep us on our timeline. We are, so far, we have hit all of our timelines. We don't expect any lags in, um, in our production tracks. We are still having um, conversations also with our faculty as to what, um, what they would like to see in the building, how we're going to move forward with um, adding different new curriculum. You saw part of it um, tonight, and thank you for, for the compliment. I will pass that on to the faculty. And that's just some of the things that we're talking about. We are also in the planning stages of, of um, sending things in place so we can go visit some facilities to look at best practices, to see how they are structuring things and what we might be able to bring back to our building. I'd like, I'd like to go. It's more than yeah, welcome. Like to go. Yeah. There, there was a more, more question, I believe, that when are we going to sell the bonds? We sold the bonds already back in December. Yeah, because it, uh, it's hitting my uh, my property tax already. I see I'm paying already. So, <laughs> like, look, let's make it happen. <laughs> we sold three hundred million dollars. That's the update that I uh, we provide back in December. That there was a lot of interest on our bonds because we're a strong district. Uh, there was about a billion dollars worth of orders for our three hundred million dollars of, oh, wow. um, of bonds. So we are very good investment for investors out there. Uh, so we sold $300 million, we, so we have the funds. When the state chancellor's perspective, I believe that was the other question, uh, that's a reimbursable. So as soon as we spend money, we, re we ask for reimbursement. Wait, say the first the part. The state chancellor's office is reimbursable. So we spend the money, then we ask for reimbursement. The so bond? this year, for the, for the state chancellors, that's the state funding that's coming from the state. Oh. The Are they holding millions. us up in any kind of way? They're not holding us up. Did no, they give us all. a check yet? No, or? no, no. So it's reimbursable. Oh, it's but reimbursable. you haven't billed them yet. Correct, correct. Okay. So we, we spend money, then we ask for reimbursement. For this year, it, it was uh, set aside $2 million for us, and then the difference comes the following years. Okay. That's where we made progress in the construction. And so how, how much does the design impact the current building coming down and us relocating those people? Like how, yeah, like can you get started on that or is it contingent on, like when can we start seeing some movement? So uh, as soon as they're done with the programming, which I believe that was what it's called, programming, which is a conversation that need, uh, President Rodriguez was just mentioning. Oh, okay, so those uh, two are tied together. That, yes, then once those com are complete, the construction that kicks off. Uh, we need to hire a, a construction management a company uh, we need to send it out for bid, if I remember correctly. I thought we already um, hired. I thought, so what is AECOM? AECOM is a program manager. Okay. They're the manage the bond program wide. Okay, and then the construction And then construction manage construction. It's managed the projects, okay. the project's construction itself, okay. yes. Okay. Uh, so that's coming up in the pipeline. It will not affect the current operations because it's in a different location. Oh, okay. So that building will stay up during the construction. That is correct. Oh, that is correct. Okay. Harrison, you had a comment? Yes. Um, I know that we're very concerned about the functionality of the building. And um, having seen the work that this particular architect or firm has done, uh, I am concerned, not overly concerned, but concerned that we not only look at the functionality, but it not be another box. Yes. That it have some architectural features that are um, consistent with a look for that campus. And so um, it, I think uh, sometimes we completely neglect and we wind up with these boxes. And so um, it, we, need to, we need to do more with the idea of how can those uh, cement walls have some architectural detail that makes them distinctive. And so um, I think that is good for the campus, for the community, and especially for our students. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. A little bit of art in all yeah. these buildings that we're doing. Yeah. Then, you know, what's, what's the building next to the library, the new one? Is that North Hall or the one next to North Hall? The, with the stairs that go all the way up? North Hall. That's North Hall? North Hall. So like usable space, because that, it's a brand new building, but it's only classrooms. There's no communal space in there. There's no, like, so I would hope that they wouldn't build it like any of the current buildings on campus. Like, students don't even really have too many 
communal places to where they can just kind of hang out and study and, um, you know, because if we're going to spend almost $100 million, it should be like the hub or the model for skill development in our whole region. And so I would hope we wouldn't just get like something similar and not the dis, the, you know, I'm just saying like we could get more for our money. Um, so like I hope we're getting to see this stuff before you guys finalize it because, uh, yeah. President Rodriguez, you had a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to address um, the trustees' concerns about the aesthetics um, of the building. We have seen some preliminary designs because uh, I have the same concerns, the same concerns. We want the building to be attractive. We want the building to be inviting as well as highly functional yeah. and state-of-the-art. And so within the building, to address Trustee Williams' concern, within the building we have what, what I started calling sticky space, and other people are starting to pick up that term. And that is places where students can gather and to do homework and to just have conversations and so on. And there are, there are places within hallways that have cutouts that may not be large enough like for a classroom. But we can put some soft seating in there. We can put some whiteboards. We can put outlets in there like we have here on the table so that students can you know, plug in their devices. There is also um, tutoring space in the building and gathering spaces for, for students. Um, but all of this <coughs> is in addition to instructional space, not in lieu of. Because that has to be our first priority is the instructional space. So. Yeah. Um, I had the privilege years ago of listening to Ray Bradbury. And mm -hmm. while Ray Bradbury may be somebody that we, cast, we think of science fiction, right? But he was also a planner. And so he, uh, he talked about the learning spaces, that learning not only occurs in the classroom, that they occur around a lunch table, that they occur where there is shade and students can discuss and laugh and enjoy, um, and that's where other types of learning go on. Sometimes it's a discussion about the teacher being so god awful, <laughs> or it may be a discussion about a problem that's in the class, um, in the sense that they all want to solve. But those are learning spaces that it's a continuum of whatever they had as raw material in that classroom that then they take and process, perhaps not in that classroom but in another area of the campus. And so it's not just the interior space, but the space that goes around it. One of the concerns that I have about Valley College, because I started my career there and I spent an awful lot of time there teaching and being a department head and then being a dean, but was the look that we had at one time, the look that we had at one time and the lack of continuity of that look and so I'm, I'm suggesting that um, perhaps the structure, the structure be one architect, but the landscape architect be Architects, another one. Yeah, yeah. And that it be one, perhaps, landscape architect for the whole campus, that the, that the, that the structural architects agree that that's who they want to work with because it will give continuity to that campus. And so I think that's very important. It's important to be able to look at spaces and want to be there. And so um, it's, um, I have a great love for both campuses, you know? So um, that's, that's the only thing that I want to say about it. Yeah. The, one of the reasons uh, that we were able to get the first $35 million from the state is that they, it was a great deal of enthusiasm that that's going to transform the community. Uh, so up, you know, the elected officials that voted for this are very excited to see some great things happening there. They've gotten a lot of co comments from the community people there. And I know you've taken the leadership in terms of cleaning the environment there. With a new building, I think it's really, really appropriate to make sure and I know you said we're going to go visit. Uh, we were going to go visit uh, somewhere in Utah, I think, before, but we couldn't. So I think it's a good idea because this this building is going to be there for 100 years, just like this other one, except it's going to look better than this one. But if that's you know, 100 years ago, this building looked good. 
but now I think it's going to be a, a, an opportunity for us to showcase this and make sure you invite the individuals that voted for that, uh, the senators and the con Congress people and, of course, the, the assembly people. So I think there, it's an enthusiasm time, and uh, we like to go with you when you go visit uh, uh, the, uh, the areas. I think you have two or three colleges that you want to go visit that are dealing with uh, technology. Trustee Longo. I wanted to uh, add my voice to uh, the expressions that I've been so delighted to hear from Trustee Harrison and the uh, remarks that President Rodriguez was making about the physical design of our buildings and the entire campus at Valley. And uh, I, I think that's something that oftentimes people ignore when they're when they're looking at the functional requirements of a public facility, and it is it is a, truly a mistake to do that. The the people who are going to be st studying and teaching and doing other jobs on that campus for for many years to come will have a. a different working environment depending on how well we do our jobs today. And, and it is something is, some people find um, uh, surprising, but it's something that I've come to really appreciate. In Los Angeles County, the County Transportation Commission has a, a uh, I don't know if it's, it's a law or just Whatever, whatever the requirement is, but they've put in a requirement that 1% of their budget on all their projects must be spent on art of some sort. So if you tour the subway lines or, or whatever in Los Angeles, as you hit the different stations, there's something distinctive at every one of them that makes them really stand out, and, uh, and it really does make a difference. And 1% and is... is I, you know, I mean, you could argue about the, the amount, but it's really, it's really very effective. And I'm so happy to see that kind of sensitivity on the part of our trustees and uh, officials. Very pleased. And just to add on to that, um, if there is a way, and it clearly appears that you're being very thoughtful in this process, you're going to see things and doing a lot of research there, if there is a way, to involve the end users, the architecture professors and students and arts um, professors and students and all that are already on campus, why not draw from those resources if that's something that we can do? It seems like there maybe is the time to do that. So if it's not going to add more, why not use some of the real great core competencies we already have? Absolutely. Our faculty have been very much involved in our discussions mm -hmm. of the facility, and also we're in the process of um, identifying a few of the faculty to go with us on the visits to provide that layer of, um, of expertise yeah. within their discipline. Yeah. And maybe some of their top students as well. Yeah, perhaps. Great. Right. If you would. Maybe hopefully last comment. The uh, I know the the Utah colleges of applied technology have a very similar requirement mm -hmm. to X percent, and I don't know what the percent is mm -hmm. uh, in the design concept to be allocated toward the aesthetics and specifically uh, some sort of structure, mm -hmm. art type structure. So on the visits that I think are going to be scheduled, you'll be mm -hmm. able to see what that looks like in actual you know practice. So. Well, then, let us take a vote on 11.21. We're happy with these, um, these people or not? Yeah. Is HMC? They oh. went through quite a process to oh, identify yes, HMC. Well, no, I thought she said something oh. in the beginning. I moved the item, um, what is this, for 11.22. 11 11 I move approval of 11.21. Uh, Can I have a second? Can we not combine them? No, we still got to talk about the second one. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Can I get a second for that movement motion? 
Thank you. Uh, student trustees? Aye. Non-student trustees? Aye. Aye. Are there any abstains or no's? Then it passes unanimously. Moving on to 11.22, the bond construction professional services pools. Trustee Williams. You're the one that pulled it. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm passing it to Trustee Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that this is part of the process of trying to get more local uh, firms that are in our area to be participate in our construction projects. Um, I, um, I see that there's some from San Bernardino. Uh, there's some where uh, Colton, Riverside. So I guess what I... What I'm most curious about is uh, I know that there has been um, a concerted outreach effort. So somewhere along the line, I would like to find out uh, how successful those outreach efforts have been, mm -hmm. and then what obstacles are we facing as we try to get smaller firms to be interested in our projects. Is it uh, one of the things when we approve the PLA we, we said, um, we approved the PLA, we found out we couldn't get the, um, uh, not, uh, we went to interns, but mm -hmm. we didn't raise the, the level. We said mm -hmm. that uh, we, local hires and local companies, subcontractors, would have to stay with low, below the one million. Um, however, our smallest project is five million. So at the time, we were not able to negotiate um, mm -hmm. raising that level to maybe two or three million, so that we could bring in more companies, more local companies. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's an obstacle, uh, but mm -hmm. I really would like to see us do a concerted effort of making sure that we uh, come in and uh, look for those small companies and that we're able to accommodate them. We have a lot of talent out there, and they have to leave our area to go find work. Um, so it's, it's a concern when we first started this, when we first got our, uh, you know, our bonds and we said mm -hmm. we're going to go out and look for people mm -hmm. and invest some of the money from that bond. Uh, issue it in our local area, yep. in our local area. And so an awful lot of work was done then. I know mm -hmm. we're trying to pre-approve things, but I'm, I'm curious, is, this is the preliminary list, I'm assuming. It is not a complete list yet. This so a, I yeah. just need a, it, it, it's I'll, not clear enough yeah. for me to know whether this is being worked on or is this the preliminary li list of so, people who so far have been sort of pre-approved. So let me uh, um, try to take a stab at it and then fill me in if I'm missing something, please. Uh, we have done, Ines and Farah have done a lot of outreach. Um, they have business industry events every single month where we invite vendors uh, along with ACOM. They, they, the three of them have done an exceptional job. Some of you have attended those events uh, uh, to see the level of work that goes into those events. We have had rooms, this room, full of vendors, small vendors, big vendors, all kinds of vendors. So they have done a lot of outreach. Ines, as you mentioned, as you saw her, she's been out to go and do uh, different presentations to different groups everywhere in the community. So we're doing a lot of outreach as well. Whenever we have the possibility of sponsoring a table to be as a vendor at any event, we'll, we do that as well. So I think we're not stopping for outreach. Um, PLA. Uh, doesn't stop anyone from applying to any of our jobs. They have to comply with the PLA. Uh, if They don't have to be union, but they have to pay the dues to the union. Uh, it, it becomes, that's what the, uh, and if some v small vendors don't want to pay the dues to the union, then they're opting not to participate in our projects. That's pretty much what it, it comes down to. Uh, this one is one of the pools of certain categories. That you have approved already a pool of other categories uh, in the past few months. This is a pool of commissioning, hazardous material assessment, 
a special inspection of material testing landscape architects. This is the pool from the four RFPs that went out and they have been pre-qualified. So for commissioning, we have, we have those six vendors that were pre-qualified. Those are the vendors that we're going to utilize in our bond measure. Uh, so for hazardous materials assessment, the five that are in there, those are the five vendors that we're going to use during the, the construction period of the measure CC. So this is the full list of those specific items. Uh, we will bring more pools as we conduct more RFPs, uh, but as, as I mentioned, you have approved some of, some of pools already from the in the past. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question. So what kinds of, what kinds of just for clarification, what kinds of um, obstacles have we bumped into mm -hmm. to try to qualify some of the smaller companies? And, and is it the cost? Is it, I guess I want to know, is it because uh, some of the projects are over a million, or is it that's the that's the big one, huh? That's the big one. Yeah, we should have we should have negotiated a little bit higher, but it, it wasn't done. So now we have to live with this. Help me understand what, why is that a barrier? Because what? Because it's over. What? Yeah. what? One of the things that we want to do is uh, we're. Uh, this industry events that we have on a monthly basis is also an opportunity for the small vendors to meet the big vendors mm -hmm. so that they can become subs of those mm -hmm. big vendors. That's pretty much the, one of the goals that we're trying to accomplish. So even though yeah. you see some big vendors here, mm -hmm. our goal and our, and our criteria for give them points is that who are they going to hire as, as subs? No, I'm, I'm, I'm asking, I'm trying to understand the issue that Gloria brought up. Um, in relation to the size of the projects and um, smaller yeah. companies getting in. Why is the million dollar threshold yeah. so, an so issue? I don't think it's the, small, the million dollar threshold. I think it's the level of projects that we have, the quantity. We have big projects and a lot of uh, small vendors within our community don't have the capacity to build a project like the CT building, for example. Well, yeah, we got that, but I thought we were saying that we were gonna parcel out, like they can do the floor. Like the whole concept when we initially went about this thing. I mean, we went to Watts did, to yeah. figure out how they did, you know, local hot. Frances yeah, Grice yeah. made us drive her to yeah. Watts to figure out yeah. how to do this. And the idea was that we had $60 million go to Orange County and San Bernardino right. Right. Um, residents are paying the tax. And, right. you know, what I think Trustee uh, Harrison is raising is that if we want to raise the income mobility of the folks in our community, the smaller guys that eat in the restaurants here have mm -hmm. to get some of the work. And yeah. so the windows, the paint, yeah. The, yeah. they don't need to build the whole building, but right. how are we parceling out yes. smaller segments? Yeah. And so I think the question is, is that happening? Yeah. Are the big guys playing in the sand with these folks? Yes. And you know, and then don't forget, we have a history from the last one. People weren't getting paid on time, and so mm -hmm. that could be a barrier to why Corporate. folks aren't coming to the table and, and applying. So you got to use the historical of yeah. you know, like some of the bad blood from the last yeah. projects that we had. So, like, are we separating out projects at a smaller? Is there a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar contract yeah. that a small yeah. guy can? bid on it and get some work. So, so the way it's gonna work, it's, I'm gonna give you an example of the technical building. We're gonna hire a general contractor to do the entire building, but they're not gonna do the work themselves. They're gonna parcel out every single category. They're gonna par parcel out the painting, they're gonna parcel out the windows, they're gonna parcel out uh, the drywall. They're gonna parcel out everything and that's the, that's the goal that we're trying to achieve is that our point criteria right now, the way we set it up is that this general contractor, regardless of who they are, they need to show us that they're hiring local hires. And the, that's how they're gonna parcel out all the work. For the small vendors that are in our community, the local drywall drywall people, the, or the painters, they're gonna come, and that's the connection that we're building with them, that the small painter comes to this industry event, makes a contact with a big general contractor and says, I do painting. Put me in as working with you when you submit your proposal. And that's how we're evaluating the proposals when they come our way. Are you hiring someone from our local community? Yes, okay, you're gonna get additional points. If not, then you're not gonna get additional points. So that's the way of parceling out the, the work. So you're seeing the small guys come? Absolutely, yes. I, I have not been able to um, make any of those meetings, but I would like to be informed because I would like to, vote, to visit 
um, I did visit it when Francis was doing the initial ones and, and met with a lot of really interesting folks that are in our area that are skilled and, and but they just are not big enough. I think mm -hmm. at one time we even did um, a whole process of trying to help them get um, insurance and a whole mm -hmm. bunch of mm -hmm. other stuff. So anyway, that's, that's my concern and I will keep bringing it up every time. This when Francis Christ. As a matter of fact, I was the one that invited Francis Christ to be able to be part of this because we're having some serious problems. Um, she did a, a good job, but um, unfortunately, she got ill and so forth. I'm really counting on our leaders to do that. I don't want to be embarrassed. Uh, Gloria just brought something to my attention that uh, we're in the community, and you have to understand that they come to us. They're not going to come to to you. They come to us, and uh, local people are asking Gloria, I asked Joseph or myself, saying, what the heck is happening? And so the one particular person uh, who's an engineer uh, has really dedicated a lot of time to make sure that uh, he even provides internships for students that go work with him. We, we need to, and, and they qualified. They've done that. I hope that you're really looking at that very carefully. Well, not only you, but the people that you've hired to, because otherwise, we're back to zero, and I'm going to be very, very, very upset because now we, we're doing the same thing we did, and we have a whole new team, and I have confidence that you're going to do a good job. I don't want people to be calling Gloria or Joseph or myself or any of us, uh, but they, they have called me. And the same person that called me called Gloria, and we're out there in the community, so we have to make sure that, I mean, I'm, I'm confident that you will do that. Please, the subcontractors need to be local. All right, so um, on the I'll, matter of I'll move approval. I'll, thank I'll you. Approval. Second. I heard him approval in a second. Student trustees? Aye. Other trustees? Aye. 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 All right, 11.22 passes. Moving on to the action agenda, the first item is 12.1 board policies for first read. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Can I get a second? Lots of second. Um, is there discussion? Then I will call for a vote of our student trustees. Aye. My colleagues? Aye. Aye. Okay. 12.1 uh, passes. Um, board policies, second reading. I can move I, approval. Can I get a second? Second. I have a point of order. Yes, please. Uh, on page 103 in the third paragraph, it includes forced sodomy under sexual assault. Um, it seems at best unnecessary and at worst offensive. Why is it legally required that we keep it there? Or why is it there? Where Would anyone like to field that question? Um, Where? On 103. What page? For sodomy as a whole. Oh, okay. oh. yeah. It's a legal definition? A legal recommendation from the league. Yeah. Mm -hmm. from, from the league, Cal the league California. California. Yes. Yeah. Why? Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, there's a know. bunch of. Well, it's defined here, but I read the entire AP, and it's only right. mentioned one time. If rape is already defined as sexual assault, then why do we feel a need to differentiate who's performing the rape? Good point. Can we look into that to see if that is an accepted definition that we need to use? or Second paragraph. Or not? Okay. So, so this is a first read, right? No, this no. is a second read. Second read. We have an attorney on the back. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. final. What you, what, what's your opinion? We can let you. I'd have to see the uh, the source of the definition. Um, I don't know that it's being read the way the law treats the term. Um, I understand that there's there's a potential. Um, 
gender issue raised, uh, but I don't know that that's actually the way the law is written uh, when, when you're uh, interpreting that term. And I can look into that and get back to the, the administration and feed some information back to the board on that prior to the second reading. Well, could you just explain how else it could be interpreted? Well, I, I did, we have to look at the definition of sodomy. Mm. Um, forced sodomy sounds to me a sexual assault. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Um, yeah. it, I don't know that the way that the terms are being used is specifically intended to be uh, targeted at a gender because it's not done that way in the statutes. Sodomy, there are laws, there are not laws related to sodomy, but forced sodomy falls within the definition from my understanding. I'd have to pull the penal code and take a look. Um, but I don't, I don't have the opportunity to do that unless you give me a few minutes on the phone. So I think, I think I'd like to get back to the trustees. Do we have a staff person present who is heavily involved in writing and researching this who can answer the question of whether this language is something that they were informed was legally required? Because unless we can establish that unequivocally right now, mm -hmm. I would move to table this till the next meeting. I, I, I'll second that. But, but did, did I hear you say you can look it up? Uh, we could certainly check into that and get back to the board through Today? the administration. Pre well, I can, get on the, I can get on my phone and start looking up the statutes if you want me to do that. Um, that's not a very effective way to table it. Yeah. You, you can table it. Okay. There's no discussion on table. Okay. But this will so, allow you to bring it back with, at the second the reading and answer the question. With the expectation yeah. that staff will, will give us a more uh, yeah. informed report at the next meeting. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. We appreciate that. 12.2 then is tabled. Um, 12 we, it has to take a vote. We have to take a vote to table? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, student trustees, what is your vote? Aye. Uh, my colleagues? Aye. 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 Okay. So um, item 12.2 is tabled till the next meeting, and at which time we'll have a better definition and understanding of the terms and potentially a change to the terms if that is required. Okay, good. 12.3, uh, uh, establish mirror accounts for SEC auction investments. Um, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, good. Um, discussion on this item. No discussion. Uh, student trustees, what is your vote? Aye. Uh, my colleagues? Aye. 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 No abstains or else. Okay. Great. So 12.3 also passes unanimously. 12.4, prioritize board directives for the 2021 general fund budget. This is a second reading. May I have a motion? I move, um, but I have discussion. I'll yeah, second. That's I'll second. second. Okay. So we have a move and a second, and now we can have discussion. Trustee uh, Williams, sir. So um, my question is about number two. It's my understanding that the Promise Program is an ongoing program, but the guiding principles say that the funds will only be used for one-time expenditures. So are we saying that the Promise Program is an approved Board of Trustees program? Because it says, you know, we can use it if the ongoing expenditure is approved by the board. I'm just Correct. wondering, does this cancel the promise out? Because this new language that's in there is saying following the guiding principles of the SEC proceeds. But Correct. so have we formally as a board approved the promise program? Or do we need to? Or I'm just trying to understand because it says only if it's a approved board expenditure. Ongoing only if it's approved by the board. Uh, Trustee Harrison, it it seemed to me that we, the concept of the promise program, was that we would, we would launch it and then hopefully be able to sustain it year by year. Uh, maybe we do have to take a, um, a closer look at it and say, can we afford this for the next year? Uh, we have not done that. Uh, we, um, I think we have a, a, a study session Special, coming up on yes. the Promise Program. Mm -hmm. It was a pilot. It mm -hmm. was a pilot. It is a pilot. Uh, and we need to look at it at perhaps a little bit closer of what we can and cannot offer with it. 
So I. Um, so can we table this until we look at the and promise? It was, it was not. It was with the idea that it would be from the gains made on the principal that we allocated for that program. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it would come from the revenue from the rentals or the lease, the mm -hmm. leases. Mm -hmm. So, um, so can, can we table this until we get a better understanding of what the so, results of the promise was? Because so, this, uh, this, yeah. this essentially gives you the ability to end it. So the, we submitted this as a first read in January. We have a board policy uh, that has, it tells us the administrative procedure that we need to submit this board directives to us by March 1st. If, you tab if we table it, we will not, we'll be in violation of our administrative procedure. Um, we brought it back in January. I think mm -hmm. you had some discussion at the retreat as well. I don't remember uh, the last sentence, though. That, that, that was the comment. Yeah, that, the additional sentence. That, that came from the retreat. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't remember yes. the discussion yeah. on that specific sentence. Yeah. You want to speak to that? Just that we did discuss this at the retreat. This reflects the discussion and the shared agreements that we had from the retreat. But what did we say about the um, ongoing, like, because it cancels out. It's basically saying that the board has to approve the program. Or right, so we, we approve the yeah. budget yeah. on an annual basis. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the uh, expenditures associated with that will be in the budget on an annual basis that then the board can approve yeah. or does approve or does not approve. Mm -hmm. Correct. That was the that was the basis of our discussion at the retreat okay, around getting, that. It's an annual. I'm getting C now, so I just don't remember. I'm seeing it <laughs> like is, for the you, first you know, time. I'm looking. You don't like, get to play that card. Hey, listen. <laughs> you can play the new dad. I'm tired. I'm not getting card. any sleep at night. <laughs> so if I understand what you're saying correctly, <laughs> is that each budget year we will be approving how the proceeds you are. get yes. invested and into the promise or not. Yes, that yeah. is correct. Okay. Every single every year you approve the budget that includes every directive that you ask us to That's complete. Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, I already did. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any additional discussion? Student trustees, how do you vote? Aye. My colleagues? Aye. 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 Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Um, 12.5, uh, we need to take action on a resolution to support Proposition 13, the public preschool K-12. Oh. Seconded. Seconded. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Move in a second. Um, student, or is there any discussion? Seems good. Okay. Good enough. Uh, student trustees? Aye. Uh, my colleagues? Aye. Aye. Are there any no's? No. Abstentions? abstentions? There we go. Okay, one abstention, one no. Um, so 12.5 passes. That concludes our action agenda for today. On informational items, is there anything that we specifically need to discuss? Or uh, I, I just was there anything related to those dates on the accreditation timeline that we physically need to be at because it has dates on it and then but then it has name like do we we're going to Crafton that day or because it says Board of Trustees Crafton mm -hmm. and then page 128 item 13.1 yes so the Crafton is coming so on on those dates if you see oh, okay. on page 129 but there's not you don't need us to, we don't have to be Anywhere or do something. No, no, you, you don't need to do anything. That's when we're anticipating you will be approving the ISA report. Uh, mm -hmm. That's when it's anticipated oh, to come you. to you. Okay. Yes. Okay. And okay. whenever that comes, we'll do a pres small presentation for okay. you as well. Great. Well, let's. Uh, are there any other informational items that anyone wants to have discussion on? Then let's look at some applause cards. They're going slowly, but we appreciate them all. Um, great. Okay. So we've already covered public comment on non-agenda items. So um, with that, we are at a point for adjournment. Our next business uh, board mi business meeting um, is on March 12th at 4 p.m. here. Um, 
I, at, oh, I'm sorry, right there, yeah, in big, <laughs> bold letters and underlined, at Valley in the bu business building in B100. Y'all should be there. Um, I want to thank everybody who did reports and all tonight and that had comments from, from up here as well. Uh, I remember being here about four and a half years ago when I was first appointed, and there, there, there was some really unfriendly discussion. And it's not like that anymore. And I really appreciate the collegial environment. And that's everybody working together. It's not like one group all of a sudden giving in. It's everybody working together. And I just really appreciate being a part of this group where that kind of thing can happen. So give yourselves a round of applause, and we'll see you in March. Thank you.